26 million scientific specimens lie behind closed doors at the Academy. You may ask yourself, what purpose do they serve? The collections here represent the most tangible and complete record of life on Earth. One of the values of these collections is we can actually begin to study how evolution happens and we can begin to study population processes. The only way that you can understand where one species begins and the next species ends is by having a large series of specimens and then you can begin to understand what's, what's going on in nature and describe new species, describe life on Earth. The latest example of old specimens answering new questions occurred in January when a research team from across the U.S. and Ecuador published a paper in PLOS One called 110 Years of Avipox Virus on the Galapagos Islands. Led by Dr. Patricia Parker of the University of Missouri, St. Louis, the team pinpointed 1898 as the year the avian pox arrived in the Galapagos and started infecting its birds. They reached this conclusion after examining more than 3,000 finches and mockingbirds housed in the Academy's ornithology collection. The researchers found pox symptoms on some of the birds dating back to 1898, and they were actually able to sequence viral DNA from a few specimens, even though they're over a century old. These specimens were collected over 100 years ago, and at that time no one was thinking of pox, no one, was, no one even knew what DNA was. And it just goes to show that when you have a, a collection like this, there's no way for us to anticipate what people might want to do with it. And that's one of the reasons that we preserve this, because in 100 years from now, you know, who knows what people will want to look at our specimens to try and do. With a library of life as rich and diverse as the Academy's, who knows what intriguing research questions will be answered next.